This presentation is gas tungsten arc welding process overview for non-welders. In the past, this presentation has been given to coworkers of mine who were mechanical, structural, or civil engineers that had to interact with welding and welding inspection people. And for whatever reason, there always seems to be a huge disconnect between the people who design the welds and those who make the welds. This presentation is definitely not designed to turn you into a welder or a savant on the subject matter of welding engineering. Hopefully this presentation will expand your knowledge base on the subject of welding and help with any future encounters that you might have with welding personnel. I'd like to acknowledge where I acquired a lot of the information from. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission uh, has an Introduction to Welding Technology and Codes course posted out there on the internet pretty much government stuff it's uh, public domain so I hit that one pretty hard uh, can teach public domain educational and reference library on the can do technology site it's you know Canada's nuclear program Canada deut deuterium uranium reactors uh, they've got a bunch of stuff I've left the the web pages here. The U.S. Army Training Manual 9-237 Welding Theory and Application. Heck of a lot of information in there. And then the U.S. Navy NAVED TRA 142-51 Alpha. U.S. Navy. I'm pretty sure that's the hull technician one. And they've got a couple of chapters in the hull technician uh, training manual that are pretty good and I've pilfered some information out of there so that's where the bulk of this material came from so I'm just I've, I've modeled it to fit a, a format for you know instructing uh, non welding engineers into the basics of you know welding and what some of these acronyms are and trying to let you see what's going on behind the behind the the curtain so you can see what's up with the great and powerful Oz so anyways this is uh, where most of the information came from my name is Gary Pace I'm a professional engineer and a certified weld inspector um, I work for Texas Metallum Welding Engineering which is me um, TexasWeldingEngineering.com is my website there's an email address if you have any questions or want to contact me in regards to welding engineering or if you have welding questions give me a shout out I usually get back to you relatively quick so uh, the following is a list of factors affecting weld process selection this is thrown in here you know to to give you an idea of things that you need to think of when you need to get something welded nothing will make a welding person crazier than just saying just weld it well what do we need to what criteria do we need to meet you know it's it's like saying telling somebody hey just go to texas well where in texas el paso beaumont dallas brownsville come on give me a region at least give me a little bit closer so that's what these this list here is doing you know the type of base metal we're going to weld, the metal thickness, the groove design, the joint alignment, the skill level of the welder, the welding position, the rate of the weld deposit, depth of penetration, impact strength and mechanical properties, you know corrosion resistance. Welding position is big because you know what are we welding? Are we welding on something that's the size of a house or are we welding on something that's the size of a pizza box? So that's one of the biggies there. Um, the type of base metal and the thicknesses, that's going to help drive what process we're going to use too. If we're, you know, if it's something the size of a pizza box, we're probably not going to use submerged arc welding. If it's something the size of a house and we're building a haul truck box or just some massive structure, we're probably going to use stick and flux core and we're probably not going to use a lot of gas tungsten arc welding so these are all considerations that need to be kept in mind when we're selecting a weld process 
Gas tungsten arc welding is an arc welding process in which the heat for welding is developed by an electric arc maintained between a non-consumable tungsten electrode and a workpiece. Protection from atmospheric contamination of the tungsten electrode, the filler metal, the weld metal, and the adjacent heated areas is achieved by a shielding gas, usually inert, argon or helium, that flows from inside a cylindrical cup that surrounds the electrode. In a majority of applications, gas tungsten arc welding is a completely manual process where the filler metal is fed into the weld puddle by the operator as it is required. In the gas tungsten arc welding GTAW process, the arc is established between the tip of a tungsten electrode and the workpiece to melt the base and filler metal. If a filler metal is used, because of its extremely high melting temperature, the tungsten electrode is considered to be non-consumable. Tungsten's melting point is 6,191 degrees F, 3,422 degrees C. An inert shielding gas protects the molten weld pool and the non-consumable tungsten electrode from the atmosphere. The process is also often referred to as TIG for tungsten inert gas. Gas tungsten arc welding, also known as TIG welding, differs from shielded metal arc welding in three important ways. The tungsten electrode is not consumed in the arc. Since it is not consumed, filler metal must be supplied separately. And finally, since there is no electrode coating to turn into gas, a shielding gas must be provided. The shielding gas and tungsten electrode are brought to the weld via a GTAW torch. A wide variety of metals and alloys can be successfully welded with this process, including carbon and alloy steels, stainless steels, alloys of aluminum, beryllium, copper, magnesium, nickel, titanium, and zirconium. Welding procedures for GTAW must receive careful attention to be certain that they contain the control measures that are required by the unusual weldability characteristics of some of the alloys. The GTAW torch, as shown here, serves multiple purposes in that it brings the tungsten electrode to the weld puddle, as well as provides the gas shielding for the weld puddle. Blanketing of the weld area is provided by a steady flow of either argon or helium gas directed through the welding torch. Since argon, in this instance, is somewhat heavier than air, it pushes the lighter air molecules aside, thereby effectively preventing oxidation of the welding electrode, the molten weld puddle, and the heat affected zone adjacent to the weld bead. GTAW torches can either be air cooled or water cooled. If the operating conditions are too high, then a water cooled torch is used. Cooling water is circulated through passages in the torch to cool the torch and the electrode power cable at the handle end of the torch. The cooling water, however, must be clean to prevent blockage of passages which may result in overheating and damage to the torch. Straining or filtering of the water at its source is recommended to cleanse it of foreign matter, which might clog up the welding torch. Gas tungsten arc welding electrodes. As stated earlier, tungsten can withstand higher temperatures than all other metals, but it can also be consumed if the temperature of the arc is too hot. Therefore, there is a limit to the current carrying capacity of tungsten electrodes. This limit, together with the heating characteristics of the work, should be taken into account before the start of welding operations. The size of the electrodes is determined by the current, which in turn is a function of the material thickness. Also note, tungsten electrodes for gas tungsten arc welding can be identified by painted end marks. Filler metals for GTAW are listed under the same specifications that contain the requirements for gas metal arc welding. While Gas tungsten arc welding requires that the filler metal be manually fed into the weld puddle and gas metal arc welding involves a mechanically fed process. The individual nature of each process precludes the use of rimmed steels with its high oxygen content as a filler metal. The difficulty of introducing deoxidizers into the weld puddle 
requires that a previously deoxidized or killed steel be used as the filler metal for both processes. Bottom line is that GTAW and GMAW filler materials are the same thing. The GMAW filler metal comes on spools, reels, or 500 pound barrels, and the gas tungsten arc welding form comes in cut lengths in a box. This is the same welding material from a mechanical property standpoint. The same welding material in regards to chemical analysis of the weld deposit. The only difference is the form that the wire comes in. Typical advantage is a gas tungsten arc welding. Gas tungsten arc welding welds more metals and metal alloys than any other process. It produces high quality and precision welds. Pinpoint control and accuracy for the welder. Aesthetic weld beads. No sparks or spatter. No flux or slag. No smoke or fumes. Can be used in all position. Welder has complete control of the arc and filler metal, permitting full penetration on side welds. It is a low hydrogen process and suitable for most ferrous and non-ferrous alloys. It is particularly suitable for thin wall pipe welds and depositing root passes on thicker wall pipe. Except for some loss of tungsten in the weld, it will produce generally high purity welds. It is available in some automatic forms for high speed pipe or other similar welding applications. In all the other welding processes, we've talked about slag removal. Well, not all the others, but gas metal arc welding that falls into this category of not needing slag removal. But gas tungsten arc welding, one of the big advantages of this is that you don't need to remove the slag. And yes, I did cross out the wire brush. You do need to wire brush after you get done with a gas tungsten arc weld. But no slag removal is a huge advantage of the gas tungsten arc welding process. Typical disadvantages for gas tungsten arc welding. Except for automatic type gas tungsten arc welding. Gas tungsten arc welding is the slowest and most costly of the arc welding processes. Gas tungsten arc welding must be given very careful control where high purity welds are required in which tungsten inclusions could be detrimental such as where liquid metals are involved. It also requires a high level of operator skill. It requires exceptionally good pre-weld cleaning because current is generally DCSP, which cannot effectively aid in cleaning during the actual welding. Process equipment is as portable as shielded metal arc welding equipment, but must include handling of separate or racked gas containers. Shielding gas can be lost when welding in high winds except where supplemental protection is provided. Equipment is more expensive than shielded metal arc welding equipment and brighter UV rays than other processes. Gas tungsten arc welding, as we've discussed in this presentation, is a very adaptable welding process. It can be used in manual, semi-automatic, or automatic operations and can be used to produce continuous welds, intermittent welds, and spot welds. Because the electrode is non-consumable, a weld can be made by fusion of just the base materials without the addition of filler metals. However, filler metals are almost always added as it tends to enhance the properties of the completed weld. Gas tungsten arc welding can be done in all positions, is useful for the welding of thinner materials, and is especially suited for welds requiring the highest quality and surface appearance in metals like titanium, zirconium, and aluminum. The surface of a competently made gas tungsten arc weld requires no additional work, filing, grinding, or surface finishing to be made suitable for NDE. Filler metals are sometimes added either manually or automatically during the welding process or as pre-placed consumable inserts. Manual additions are made by hand feeding a filler rod to the weld puddle. Automatic feed systems supply filler metal normally as spooled wire to the weld puddle at a predetermined rate. Consumable inserts are typically placed in the root of a pipe joint during fit up prior to welding and are consumed in the weld puddle during welding operations. 
when I give this presentation live, this is the point where I usually ask if anybody's got any questions, but seeing how this is a presentation that's on the internet, you don't get that. So if you've got any questions, send me an email. If you have any need for a welding engineer, same contact information. My website is texasweldingengineering.com. My name is Gary Pace. Occasionally I get a question in regards to where I went to school or where I got my welding engineering degree. I went to Montana Tech in Butte, Montana. It's a four-year ABAT accredited welding engineering school. Small class sizes, good um, faculty, good value for your money. If you're interested in welding engineering and you want to check out the state of Montana, um, Montana Tech's a good place to visit, go to school.